Hey everyone, today I'm going to be making a video about safe loot paths for ideally uncontested early games, a couple of which are going to involve these new sky platforms that have been recently added, so I want to begin with information on how to operate these turbines. If you don't give yourself enough momentum, then it's going to be difficult to have a high jump. So you want to make sure that you go a little bit down into the stream before looking up, and then you can really make your the most out of the vertical on a lift, I guess. So when you're looking to rotate out of here, there's a few options you have, mainly in the form of the nearby turbines, the windows, I guess. So the best one would be to go for this one. There's one chest on here, one on top of the mountain, and then one on the other side, another turbine that is. This is a good route to go because you can easily max out your wood here. So if you take a long time farming the metal here, which you should be doing, uh, you'll make up the time with the efficiency of the wood pallets. You could also go for this windmill over here. However, it's possible that the team who lands villain base or the player who lands villain base will go for this. There's one other chest spawn on this area as well, so there's two total there. And then there's also one baller and one chest spawn over there. If you want more loot and you notice that no player lands at, at this haunted outpost, then you can go over here. Um, be careful not to hit that tree, that's happened to me a few times. The next spot I'd recommend is this shifty sky platform. Uh, it has pretty much the same loot as the other one. <clears throat> but the thing is, you have a very high chance to loot all of Creasy. And underneath here is one baller and one hoverboard and one chest spawn. So you can know pretty quickly how long you have before you can you need to rotate out. Uh, if you land here and a player lands greasy, then ideally you have an AR or something that can pressure them since they won't be getting any real mats from staying inside any of the buildings, presuming they're not sitting in the main shop over here farming literally every wall or something. Uh, if you don't have an AR and you need to rotate out, then you just have to use your vehicles and hope for a good rotation maybe towards the giver tree, which has two chests on them. A good amount of wood, I believe 200 in and of itself, as well as a decent amount of rocks. Uh, this is similar to the Palo Mountain in which you get efficient wood here to make up for inefficient metal. However, it's not as good as the pallets, of course. Theoretically, you should have this first, this rotation first, since players probably won't land there and zip line over here, since they'll have ballers, so they'll want to use said ballers and go to wherever they can on the map that they notice doesn't have players landing there. The last safe loot path I would recommend is to land on this infinite rift island. There's three chest spawns as well as three to four hundred wood, which should get you enough through early game fights. Um, you don't want to farm all of the wood here if you obviously have bad spawns or unlucky loot. So you just take the rift and then I would recommend rotating either to this top house since baller teams generally or players generally rotate towards these two houses first since they have better loot. In here is one chest spawn and one floor spawn. If you don't want to risk it, then just come down here instead where there's two chest spawns, a vending machine spawn, a couple hoverboards. Uh, afterwards, I would recommend coming to this Yeti cave. There's a more, ch more chest spawns throughout and decent brick in the form of these rails, as well as another hoverboard spawn. You can take this hoverboard or I mean, I guess any hoverboard, honestly. And go towards the outpost here, get some metal, and also get the metal presented in the form of the truck here and the car here, both of which have one loot or one chest spawn. So overall, this path isn't too bad because most people 
don't come here and if they do then it's off timing with you since you have um, a quicker rotation generally since each individual area doesn't take very long to loot. Following this I would recommend trying to get a baller at frosty flights either at this thing or the one over there or one of the I believe eight spawns within these two buildings. Yep, so altogether there's 10 ball spawns really close to Frosty that probably not every player will pick up. So if you want to come through later after the players who land here leave and just pick up a free ball, then it's not a bad idea at all. Well, I guess that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like, subscribe, yada yada. Alright, thanks. See ya.